Hello, my name is Sunil Yudani. I'm the local site PI for NANI Research's participation in the GFB 887-201 clinical trial. As you can see, this is a phase 2A randomized controlled trial of the novel agent GFB887, an oral TRPC5 inhibitor in the treatment of diseases of podocyte injury, including focal segmental glomerulosclerosis or FSGS and treatment resistant minimal change disease. Over the next 10 minutes or so, I'd like to present to you an overview of the scientific rationale for the study agent, the preclinical and phase one data, and finally the essential inclusion and exclusion criteria so that you may potentially identify patients who would be interested or benefit from participation. To start with the scientific rationale, Largely through the work of Dr. Anna Grecker from the Harvard Medical School and Broad Institute, we have learned that inherited or acquired injury to the actin and cytoskeleton filaments and podocytes leads to an excessive activation of RAC1. RAC1 activation subsequently leads to an increase in TRPC5 channels in the podocyte cell membrane. The TRPC5 channels can be further activated by other signals as seen here, such as angiotensin II receptor 1, an epidermal growth factor. The result is excessive calcium influx, leading to activation of calcineurin. The active calcineurin dephosphorylates synaptopotin. Synaptopotin is a critical protein in maintaining podocyte integrity, and the dephosphorylated synaptopotin leads to further unraveling of the actin cytoskeleton structure that maintains Podocyte attachment to the glomerular basement membrane, seen here. Once detached, this leads to the clinical manifestations of proteinuria and subsequent complications of the nephrotic syndrome. Accordingly, it was postulated that inhibition of TRPC5 using the novel study compound GFB887 could ameliorate this process. In a series of experiments, including various animal models of podocyte injury, including the docosalt rat, AT1R rat model of FSGS, PAN model of minimal change disease, and even the Zucker diabetic Sprague Dolly rat model of diabetic nephropathy, this has been demonstrated with a reduction in proteinuria, seen here. And this reduction in proteinuria appears to be independent of blood pressure reduction. The pathway of protection does appear to be suppression of RAC1 activation, as the GFB887 induced RAC1 inhibition corresponds with reduction in alvinuria, seen the side as well as here. While in some ways the podocyte protective pathway is similar to calcium inhibition, GFB887 by directly inhibiting TRPC5 is a distinct pathway, and this leads to a more indirect prevention of calcineurin activation. Accordingly, the toxicities observed with calcineurin inhibitors have not been seen in the preclinical and phase one trials of GFP887. Specifically, in the phase one study of healthy subjects, doses even higher than those demonstrated to be effective in preclinical studies were not observed to have dose limiting toxicities. Nor there were changes seen in laboratory parameters such as potassium or creatinine and nor were there EKG changes seen, such as QT prolongation. Further, there were minimal effects on blood pressure. Accordingly, it has been proposed that this is a more specific and better tolerated pathway for podocyte protection, rather than existing agents, all achieved without immunosuppressive effect. Built on this foundation, Goldfinch Bio has sponsored the execution of a phase 2A randomized control trial to evaluate the effectiveness of GFP887 in individuals with FSGS or treatment resistant minimal change disease. I've outlined the key inclusion and exclusion criteria here. Firstly, there must be a diagnosis of FSGS or minimal change disease based on a biopsy or genetic testing. The FSGS must be primary, meaning non-adaptive or secondary to another underlying disease, such as a solitary kidney, obesity, et cetera. Proteinuria must be persistent with 
either a protein creatinine ratio of greater than a gram per gram creatinine or a 24 hour urine collection of greater than one gram per day. With regard to treatment resistant minimal change disease, it must be persistent proteinuria in the same range despite eight weeks of adequate first line immunosuppressive therapy, steroids, or an alternative agent. Renal function must be fairly well preserved with an EGFR of greater than or equal to 30 mL per minute per 1.73 meters squared. Individuals must be on an ACE or an ARB for three months with a stable dose for the past four weeks unless there's a documented allergy or intolerance. SGLT2 inhibitors are allowed but not required, and if they are on an SGLT2 inhibitor, they must be on a stable dose for the past four weeks. Individuals can be on steroids or mycophenolate for a three-month period prior to uh, randomization with a stable dose for four weeks. They cannot currently be on a calcium inhibitor or have demonstrated clear resistance to CNI with an adequate trial with adequate serum levels. Individuals cannot have received rituximab or cyclophosphamide in the last 120 days, and as above, they cannot have FSGS secondary to an underlying additional disease. A few more details about the protocol. It is a randomized controlled trial in a two-to-one fashion, meaning that for every three subjects randomized, two will receive both study drug and standard of care versus one individual receiving standard of care alone. There's a 12-week period of study drug with eight-week washout, and there's an extension study available. I hope this provided you an adequate introduction and summary, and I appreciate your time and interest. If you have additional questions and you have or your potential patients that you would like to refer, please contact me directly or our clinical research coordinator. Both of our contact information is listed here. I very much look forward to collaborating with you all as we seek better treatment and options for our patients. Thank you.